Hello everyone, today I'm going to be going over all of the God changes happening in the 8.7 mid-season patch, which is coming out on July 13th. If you're looking for uh, the item and relic changes, that's in a separate video. I'll have that linked in the description below and in a card that you can click on to go watch that. But this video is specifically only about the God changes and how these God changes are going to impact um, Joust specifically. Uh, they're making quite a few changes to gods that haven't really been that powerful for a while, so I think this actually will shift up who you're trying to pick uh, or avoid in Joust. With that being said, let's just hop right into the changes themselves. The first one is Amaterasu, Heavenly Reflection, which is her shield, uh, main burst damage ability, increasing the charge rate from taking damage from four to four and a half, and then increasing the charge gain from hitting an enemy uh, from 0.15 to 0.2. So both of these things, whether she is taking damage or dealing damage, out she's going to be charging that shield up faster so that she can get that burst damage off so all in all this is a good buff for her and then dazzling offensive which is her ultimate ability also just getting a little bit more scaling to, towards the end of the game doing 20 more damage um, at level five same damage at level one but realistically this is probably one of the best ultimate abilities in the game for team fights um, that mixed with the Heavenly Reflection buff, uh, just Amaterasu's viability as an auto attack based warrior, and some of her stance uh, switching abilities where she can give her teammates a movement speed aura or a power aura. I think you're going to want to put Amaterasu up a little bit in your list as far as who you're thinking about when choosing a, a warrior to play uh, in the Joust game mode. I don't think she's necessarily going to be the only like guardian or support that you want but if you're doing a, a double warrior comp or a warrior guardian comp i think she's going to be pretty strong just the ability that she has to give her teammates uh, not only setup but also like i said movement speed so we, they can kind of run around the jungle faster and clear camps faster and burn down the objectives she'll be a lot better than she has been in the past artemis also getting a few buffs, uh, increasing the base damage on her Transgressor's Fate, which is the traps uh, that you step into and get stunned by or rooted by. That's having damage increased at all levels, only about two more base damage at later levels, so a little bit more impactful in the early game. And then decreasing cooldown um, by, it looks like, four seconds on level one, and then the same at level five. So you're going to have more traps, or traps are going to be up more often, I should say, and they're going to be doing more damage, which definitely would be annoying in Joust. Um, also, Vengeful Assault, which is the, the arrow attacks that uh, she shoots the arrows down from above, increasing movement speed from 20% to 25%, and decreasing that cooldown. It looks like two seconds at level one, and then scaling down to the same, the same amount at level five. So again, going to have that up a little bit more often early, making her early game better, which is where she's always kind of struggled. But realistically, I think in Joust, Artemis just has a hard time because if you can bait her alt out, there's really no way that she can peel for herself and she's just kind of a sitting duck. Um, yeah, she has a lot of kind of ability to box, but in a lane where it's 3v3, she's never going to really have that opportunity and there's just going to be too much going on for her to survive if you dive her properly. So this will help her. I don't think she's a top pick by any means and I still think she can she can work in some cases, but there are just better picks for Joust. Baba Yaga, blast off, decreasing cooldown from 16 to 14, and then home sweet home, which is her ultimate ability, increasing the shield health scaling from 15 to 25% and increasing the knockback strength from 330 to 400. So if you don't know, Blast Off is her um, escape ability. It is her leap, but it's one of the weakest leaps in the game. And that's because she actually has to channel it for one second before she's actually able to burst out and, and do the leap. So it's... It's good that she has it up more often, but you still have to use it intelligently because it's fairly telegraphed. Um, and you do get some knockout protection with the ability. You do get some damage mit mitigation uh, from that ability. Um, so having it up more often will definitely help, but not in a way that's going to really put her on top of the meta. Um, that being said, Home Sweet Home also getting buffed. So you can see where this... Um, 
This will do more shield health based on magical power, where this is 15% shield health. And that is what's actually getting the buff here. So it's going from 15 to 25%. So her health shield is going to actually scale based off of power. So you're not going to want to build her necessarily like bruisery. Um, because of that, you, you want that extra shield health. So you want to go power, you want the burst ability. And then just especially with just how Baba Yaga works, uh, you want more power anyways. So I don't think this is going to put her on top of any Joust tier list by any means, but these are actually really good changes, especially on the alt itself. And the, the knockback of 400 is, is pretty significant just to keep yourself alive. So keep her on your list. Probably, probably one of those picks that you wait till, till last to pick, but she can be good. And then especially with the single lane and her ultimate um, damaging abilities that kind of chase down enemies, they have really nowhere to go in lane. So she'll be, she'll be pretty good. Baron Somdi, Hysteria, which is his um, passive. The increased Hysteria applied on basic attacks from 2 to 5. Vivid Gaze, also increasing Hysteria applied from 10 to 15 per hit. And uh, that ability has two possible hits. It's the, the ability that has two lines. And then if you hit in the middle where the X, uh, where the, the lines cross, you can actually hit that twice. So now you can actually stack uh, Hysteria 30 uh, instead of 20 if you hit both of those. And it also added power debuff duration to the description um, where even if the target is at zero hysteria, you're still going to have that, that debuff that happens to the enemy. And consigned spirits, which is the heal, decreasing cooldown from 15 uh, down to 11 to 13 down to 11. So again, going to have that up pretty often in the early game. And let's just look at hysteria too, just to remind everyone kind of why you want to be stacking Hysteria specifically, which is his his passive. So enemies hit by Baron will have Hysteria applied to them. Baron's abilities interact with Hysteria to get bonus effects. Targets at max Hysteria take 20% additional damage from Baron. So that stacks up to 70. And again, if we look back at the updates, his basic attacks are going to do 5 now, which is going to help you stack that Hysteria quicker. And Vivid Gaze, uh, you can basically get 33% more Hysteria if you hit both of those um, line abilities on one enemy. So at 30 here, you're going to be able to stack almost half of the Hysteria um, passive, which is, is very, very helpful in team fights. So Baron will be good. Healers are always good in Joust. Um, I don't think he's going to overtake like Afro by any means, uh, but Baron is, is pretty... You can play him in a few different ways where you don't have to necessarily always go full damage with him either kind of a support tank build works on baron so i think he will be uh, someone that you want to keep in mind as well in this new joust update <clears throat> dodgy 1000 cuts um decrease cooldown from 13 seconds to 11 seconds uh, this will help her out quite a bit uh, she she does okay in joust but um, her main, I think, utility is her ultimate, so you can pull people out of, out of tower or out of their tower or into your tower or whatever uh, you need to do. But this is just a cooldown buff. Isn't going to necessarily put her in into team comps unless it's kind of built around her. There are just other assassins that do better in in joust. So again, kind of keep this in mind as a pick. She'll be okay, but. Um, this isn't going to rocket her to the top of the list by any means. Hachiman, Eagle Eye, increasing the ammo count to four at all ranks. So when this is toggled on, you're going to have four shots of it instead of three for the first two levels. Decreasing the cooldown so it's not 12 seconds at all levels. It's going to be 12 seconds beginning, and then every time you level it up, it gets a half second shorter on that cooldown. And a decrease in the mana cost uh, from 50, 60 up to 90, 250 at all ranks. So this ability was already kind of subpar. Um, so these buffs are just basically making this ability, I wouldn't say good, maybe above average now. Um, this mana cost reduction is actually pretty good, but because of his passive, he doesn't necessarily have to worry about that too much. Um, and then having four shots is definitely helpful, but again, this ability just isn't that, isn't that great. So. Um, 
That won't change too much about him. Heavenly Banner, though, increasing the physical power scaling from 45 to 55% and increasing the attack speed bonus, um, you know, double at level 1 from 5 to 10, and then 5% at level 5 from 15% to 20% is actually, I feel, a more impactful buff to Hachiman's kit. So if you look at his abilities again, Eagle Eyes the Toggle, where he, he fires a series of arrows, that one's not going to be too impactful, but Heavenly Banner itself, if you don't remember, this banner actually also buffs your ally's attack speed while they're in the range of the banner. So think about using this ability when you're trying to take a tower or um, burn down any of the camps or Siege of Phoenix or anything else, especially early on with this change, um, doubling that it's early on will be very helpful. So I think this was the ability that you probably wanted to level anyways, and now you're definitely gonna to wanna to level this ability first. And I think this does put Hachiman up there in the conversation with, with some of the hunters that you're picking. I still think Cupid has a really impactful ultimate. Hu Yi is good on the map with all the bounces. Um, Medusa with the one lane also has a really good time with her ultimate. But uh, if you're looking for a, just another good hunter, uh, or you, you're trying to last pick hunters and you think that the other ones are going to get banned out, Hachiman will be um, definitely up there in consideration with this buff. Hades, this is a really interesting change. So Devour Souls decreasing the cooldown from 11 seconds to 10 seconds, which is his uh, main damaging ability. So that's where he uh, pops up from um, or hits the ground and then does damage in that area around him where the you can detonate the blighted enemies, which are normally the the minions. So having that up more often is going to help him. But the other change, which is Pillar of Agony, his ultimate, when the Pillar of Agony damages an enemy, all of Hades' other abilities have their cooldown reduced by 0.2 seconds. So if you're thinking about Joust now specifically, every time you hit Pillar of Agony, it does damage every 0.5 seconds for four seconds. And I think it actually does it on the first tick as well. So there's a possible a possibility of five times where you deal damage within this Pillar of Agony. So now with this cooldown reduction, if you have one person in that Pillar of Agony, um, you're going to reduce all your cooldowns by one second if you hit all of those five stacks. If you hit two people with your ultimate, with all of your um, ultimate ticks, now you're going to have all your abilities reduced by two seconds, right? If you have three, you're going to reduce it by three seconds if it hits all those ticks. So in Joust, this is going to make him a lot better, and it's going to, I think, make it a little more... You're going to get rewarded a little bit more for even canceling out of the ultimate in certain cases, where you don't have to always let it uh, go all the way to the end, because you're going to have that cooldown reduction and hopefully be able to go through a second rotation of your... Um, your Hades combo, which is, you know, Death from Below, Shroud of Darkness, and then Devour Souls, which is a really, really high damaging combo. So I think this will make him interesting, an, in an interesting pick. Um, I think his ultimate can be really good, but there's just a lot of things right now that you can't really first pick him because there are so many gods that can get out of it fairly easily. But this will definitely make him a lot better. And again, kind of not rocket him up the, the charts on mages that you want to pick necessarily, but it's not going to, as of like right now, you don't really want to pick Hades into anything, so it'll make him viable. Hebo, increasing the base damage on his water cannon, which is one ability at uh, early stages, so instead of doing 60 damage at level 1, it's going to do 80, and then 125, 170, 215, and then the same 260 at level 5. Just trying to help his early game out a little bit. In Joust, I don't think Hebo's that good, um, and this isn't going to, it's not quite enough to make him viable, really. There's just too many ways that he can get CC'd, and uh, he struggles too much in the early game to really kind of come online uh, where you want him to. So I still think he's probably at the low, the lower point of the list on mages you want to prioritize. Hell, getting increased magical power scaling from 50 to 60% on her DK, which is the damaging ability in her dark stance, and decreasing the mana cost um, at all levels, it looks like, by 10. So she's going to be able to afford to spam this ability a little bit more often because that mana cost is going down, and also her restoration, which is her one in the light stance, decreasing that mana cost at the same rate as well. 
So now she's going to be doing more healing on, you know, she's going to be able to do more healing for her own team and do more damage to the enemy team. Also getting increased magical power scaling from 70 to 75% on repulse. So she's going to be pretty good. I think as healers go, as far as um, healers go, Afro is kind of the one that, that always gets banned out in Joust. But Hell can actually be very, very good. Um, she's a little bit unsafe at times, so you have to have a good player who, who knows how to play Hell. Uh, one of the, the guys that I play with has a really, really good Hell, and she can absolutely carry the game if the other team doesn't focus her or know how to get rid of, of the Hell, right? So having more of the, the one up more often, or not more often, but uh, the cost isn't as much, so she can use it more over a longer period of time. It's gonna be more oppressive, gonna help um, sustain herself and her team. And then repulse, uh, more damage around her to punish enemies that are kind of jumping on her. It's gonna make her, her pretty good. So if you don't play Hell or if you have somebody that knows how to play Hell, I would really I would really try to prioritize this pick as a, a healer. She doesn't get banned very often, if at all. So it's kind of a sneaky one that you can kind of backdoor in and last pick without having to necessarily worry about it. So if you can build a comp around her, protecting her and keeping yourselves alive, um, she, she is really good in Joust. Hera, increasing Magical power scaling on Argus's first hit from 30 to 35%. Um, same thing on the second hit, and then the third hit from 40 to 45%. So this is to help his uh, late game out a little bit. He just gets kind of shredded too much late game by hunters that have full builds online, so just trying to make that first hit do a little bit more um, and make a little bit more of an impact on the fight. And then Royal Assault, decreasing or sorry increasing fist damage uh, from 80 to 280 it looks like more later scaling so 80 at the first level but now doing 300 fist damage um, at late stages of the game so Hera's is good in joust uh, again she kind of suffers a little bit of that un unsafe mage um, situation she does have a good shield but with sunder being upgraded uh, that might not be as impactful anymore. So I think that Hera is also a good fringe pick. Uh, Argus is actually really nice for sieging in the early game. Having an extra god, basically, on your team on a pretty short cooldown uh, is, is really good. So you're, you're going to be able to tank the, the tower early on. And then again, for the Phoenix pushes, having uh, a fourth god that can just go in there and soak up some damage while your team is able to focus the phoenix is really helpful as well so she'll be good she'll be above average um, and then argus will do a little bit more which in joust it actually is a pretty annoying ultimate and it's up often enough that it can make a, a really big difference on the game jormungandr increasing basic attack damage from 9.6 to 10.4 so just a little bit more damage on his uh, basic attacks and then submerge increasing movement speed from 25 percent to 35 percent so this is ability where he goes invisible and uh, when he pops up he can knock enemies up this is pretty significant i think 25 to 35 percent is not a small buff on movement speed uh, and then with some of the the boost changes happening obviously Movement speed is, is just always nice on gods, especially now that you can't rush boots. So I think Yorm will be, he'll be okay in Joust. I don't know if you necessarily want him as a, a full-on support either. Um, but if you're doing like a bruiser build on him, he can do a surprising amount of damage. His ultimate is global, so you're able to dive um, pretty safely into their backline and escape if you need to, or chase them down if it's somebody across... Um, across the lane that you just need to finish off. So I don't think um, he's barely ever picked at all now. I don't see him, again, skyrocketing up the list by any means, but I think these changes will, will help to will help him out uh, more than anything else. And um, I think you can win with any, any god in Joust, uh, but realistically, this is probably not the guardian you want to pick, even with these changes. Uh, maybe you're going some sort of like invisible comp that's kind of that's kind of cheesy just thinking about it, but 
something like that where you catch them off guard. You're only going to be able to do that so many times. But either way, this will be helpful for him. Um, and we've been, we've been experimenting with him to see how viable he can be in. With the one lane, the breath does feel okay, the, the slow fields. But I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be enough to, to make him make people want to pick him. Kali, increasing a base mana from 205 to 225. So just uh, a little bit more mana to begin the game. Nimble Strike, decreasing mana cost from 70 to 60. And Incense, decreasing the mana cost from 70 to 60. So Nimble Strike is the jump of hers. And then Incense is the, where she uh, hits this at her feet and can stun enemies. So that combo with the decreasing mana cost, going to be able to do that more, um, more within the context of not having to back. And then Lash, which is her damaging ability where she throws uh, those three blades out and they converge on one target. Uh, the blade damage in is increased from 35 to 75 all the way to 37 to 85. So you're going to be doing you know, six damage more early if you hit all three of those or 30 damage more late if you hit all three of those abilities. So with some of the changes that are happening uh, with items, I think Kali can be good. She's obviously more of a, a late game kind of carry the the entire uh, game on her shoulders when it gets to that point but with these changes it makes her feel less bad early on um, i still don't know if she's the assassin you want to pick in joust specifically um, but she she does have the ability to carry a game completely uh, in the late game so shredding towers shredding phoenixes staying alive um, might be another pocket pick for people that can can play this god well Mulan, increasing base, base health from 480 to 490, increasing base health per level from 82 to 84, so making her a little bit more um, bulky early on in the game. And then Cross Strike, increasing the physical power scaling per hit from 30 to 35%, so that's pretty significant. Uh, if you hit all three of them, you can scale up to 105%. And again, just as a reminder on that ability, uh, you do have to kind of level it up before you get the three swipes so cross strike you when she's skilled at it she gains attack speed after using it once she hits that adept at that time now she has the third strike so you're not going to have that third strike at all early on in the game until you level this item up or this ability up and then she gets 10 percent attack speed once that ability is mastered <clears throat> so 105 percent uh power scaling uh is is obviously very good and you need to hit all three of those but that's not going to come online till you know sometime mid to late game and in joust sometimes you don't even um it, it takes a while to get there grapple providing five percent protections in addition to the movement speed when mastered and increased grapple protections from 20 to 40. Um, it looks like five at all levels so a little more a little bit more protections uh, at all levels of that grapple ability and then let's look at that one too just to remind ourselves Protection increase, this is going up five at all levels. And then um, when she masters it, which is obviously, again, kind of takes a while, this is, I think, the easiest ability to master if you're consistently hitting the grapples. But now when it is mastered, you're gonna get 5% movement speed and you're going to get 5% protections. So you're gonna get rewarded for hitting those uh, grapples and then you're also gonna get rewarded with more protections and more survivability. So uh, you're not putting yourself in those situations and then getting punished for it because how the grapple works is you you throw your grapple out and it's not like a sylvanas pull where the enemy is pulled to you you know 100 it's like the enemy is pulled about 50 percent and mulan is also pulled 50 percent so uh, there are times where you hit grapple and you're putting yourself in a, a vulnerable situation so now if you are mastering that it's it's less of a a punishment when you hit that grapple which i think will feel good on mulan and she's been getting pretty consistent buffs, and I think she's she's also a very heavy damage early game warrior, and I think she can be actually legitimately good in Joust. She's not picked up that often, um, and you have to hit your grapple pretty consistently, but the ultimate, the stun, the knockup can be very, very... So you can interrupt them from trying to siege, from trying to defend, uh, from trying to even just run away if you hit them uh, with your with your stun and then get the knockup. It's a really 
large amount of CC and you can hit the entire enemy team pretty easily with the ultimate because it is such a large field. So we're going to be expending, experimenting with Mulan a little bit uh, and I think she will be good in this update. <clears throat> Odin, Lunge getting a decreased cooldown it looks like at all levels by one second. Raven Shout getting a decreased cooldown at all levels by one second. So that bird bomb combo that kind of everyone likes to use where you Raven Shout, Lunge, tons of damage. If you can hit that consistently, obviously your Odin is good. You're going to have that up more often, which is going to feel good for him um, technically, but he still kind of runs into mana problems early on. And then Gungnir's Might, which is his spear, increasing the physical power scaling on that throw damage from 50 to 60%. Uh, don't know, I don't think this is going to bring him into uh, any sort of priority pick position in Joust. Uh, a good Odin can actually perform well. Uh, with the ultimate, especially it being in a narrow lane, you, you can get all three people in it. But I think there are, again, just too many too many counters to him at this point that don't make him uh, that that good anymore. So I don't, I don't think this is going to bring him up um, by any means. He just has too many mana problems early, and he's just... All of his abilities kind of are so telegraphed that you can avoid most of what he's trying to do in Joust. Olaron, Overflowing Divinity, increasing magical power scaling from 15% to 25%, uh, and then Sanctified Field, decreasing the cooldown on that by 20 seconds in the early game, which is very, very significant. Um, on top of that, he also has 40% crowd control reduction while in his Sanctified Field. So this uh, is his ultimate ability, obviously, Overflowing Divinity. We'll go over that just really quick first. Um, he gains amplified attack speed, and every successful attack on an enemy provides his inner sun with energy. He can refire it um, to damage enemies too, so that is just going to be a little bit more powerful. Instead of 15% damage on the scaling, you're going to 25%, which will help him out a bit in the damage department. But realistically, the buff on Sanctified Field is what Olorun is known for and why he's so good. So now having this 20, you're gonna have this up 20 seconds more often, right? In the early game, if you're leveling this. Very good. In Joust specifically, again, you have that one lane in most cases that you're fighting in. So you can hit the Sanctified Field in the entire lane and the enemy team is forced to either, you know, back out of that field, which might allow you to take a tower easier. Or if they go the other way and come towards you, you can force them into a fight uh, and the you know how they're cc with the which is like a slowing time warp kind of field it just puts you at such an advantage in that fight so i don't i still think he kind of suffers from very low mobility right like artemis or someone like that 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 if his ultimate is down he's very vulnerable but i think his ultimate is just so much better than an artemis ultimate or um, someone like that where it's this actually does make him a lot better in Joust. And with some of the ADCs and the magical ADCs coming into the meta, like Soul is performing well in Joust. I think Kronos does well in Joust right now. Oleron, as long as you're kind of having a comp around him that can make sure to peel for him, um, he will be good. And he's a healer too, which is kind of just an added bonus on top of everything else. So you might see this guy more often in Joust. Ratatosker mostly just changes because of the boots that are removed as of the 8.7 update. So the first tier acorn decreasing that movement speed from 8% to 2%. The tier 2 acorns decreasing the movement speed from 10 to 4%. And then the all the upgraded acorns also moving from 20% movement speed to 6%. And that's just so he can't build these acorns early and be faster than literally everybody else in the game um, could ever be. So obviously these are healthy changes. Um, the acorns are still, I think, a pretty good uh, mechanic on him. And he's pretty versatile in Joust. The ultimate, the uh, global ultimate, isn't quite as impactful, I don't think, because it's not, you can't go all the way across the map or anything. So he's kind of mid-tier, can work, but not necessarily a priority. Susano, uh, quality of life changes coming for Susano. Now he's gonna be able to refire that Typhoon, which is his ultimate ability if he dies. So similar to where Scylla can fire Crush after she dies and get the damage off, Susano is going to be able to use that. Not really 
too impactful, I don't think. Like, if, if the only value you're getting is after you're dead as Susano, that's really not what you want to be doing. Um, I do think he can be pretty good in Joust, just the, the ability to kind of pull other teams out of position or one member of the team out of position pretty consistently and pretty easily. Uh, he gets punished if you focus him, though. So mid-tier, again, kind of a fringe-tier pick, but this will help him do a little more damage and, um, after he dies. And then Terra, Crushing Earth, now can refire Crushing Earth while she's dead. Uh, kind of the same thing. This is even less utility, though, on Terra because it's such a small window that you can use this and it's not impactful it doesn't do as much damage as a typhoon so i think this is just yes it'll feel good to hit that crushing earth from time to time but this doesn't really shift her in any significant way thor increasing the radius that he can get warrior's madness uh, which is his passive so he gains physical power for each enemy god within 30 units of him up to a stack of you know three so in joust he can still get max stacks where he gets 30 physical power as a, at that max. But now, instead of within 30 units, it's going to be 55 units, um, which I believe is actually the uh, hunter auto attack range. So in Joust, you're probably going to be in that range fairly often as Thor, and you're going to get a little bit more power from that, which will help him. And then Anvil of Dawn, increasing the physical power scaling from 90% to 100%, uh, just getting rewarded a little bit more for hitting that ultimate, which is obviously a very, very good ultimate. Uh, he works pretty well in Joust at times, the ability to wall people off. Um, you can build him somewhat bruisery and get away with it because he does so much damage. And now with the increased radius on his Warrior's Madness, he's going to be able to stack that a little bit easier and want to be going in a little bit more um, because the Anvil of Dawn also does more damage. So this would be a good shift for him. I think he's above average in Joust, but not necessarily priority pick. I think he, he'll he'll perform um, in certain scenarios. Thoth, Hieroglyphic Assault, increasing magical power scaling from 20% to 25%. So this is his uh, one ability that he shoots three auto attacks out. Very oppressive god um, in Joust. I think he's... There are times that I feel like in the laning phase, he's better than he was before because he has the, just such range that nobody can go anywhere. But there are also times once you get to late game where you don't have the walls that you had in, um, in other Joust maps and not the classic Joust maps. So he's less effective in some of those cases. But either way, very oppressive, such range with uh, as a mage. At times we actually ban him in our comps. I don't know if it's always worth it just because you do have to be, you have to have, be very conscious of your positioning with Thoth. And if you're you're out of position, you can get punished for it very, very easily. Um, but this power scaling going up to 25% will be very, very annoying. So this might be, might put him in a position where he's just um, a good ban. Or if you're maybe not a first ban, but if it looks like the enemy team is kind of building a comp around him by might ban him out second or third phase um, but he's gonna be doing a lot of damage early on with this power scaling tiamat getting some of her minions buffed uh sorry nerfed excuse me summon serpents uh when serpents damage a phoenix or titan now they're going to take a pip of health and damage so regardless of if the titan or phoenix is actually targeting them if they damage those structures they're going to lose one health uh, this is just so that she can't, it's mostly based around a conquest because people were using the serpents to actually push down objectives kind of as a, a split push mentality and they didn't want that. <clears throat> so this is going to take that ability away. This serpents wasn't that great in the new joust map anyway. So this is going to make a, a huge effect summon beast, uh, which is one of the, um, her ultimate in the, her up stance. It's the one where she can summon the the Kusariku, I think is what the guy's name is, where he stands and then attacks uh, with an 80% slow in, in a radius. Now you can't just drop him and he's going to live for 30 seconds without you know getting any sort of um, decrease on it, right? If he can sit in um, a jungle for 30 seconds, right? You could drop him, not have to worry about it and get a ton of utility. It's going to last half that long now. 
So if somebody pulls him, obviously they can kill him before that, but you can't just drop him somewhere and not worry about it and have have that ability to kind of have another ward on the, the battlefield, right? Um, I think that is probably one of her best ultimates, though, regardless. And I don't know how much you use that in that way in Joust specifically. So I don't think this will have too much of an impact. She's still good Joust God. Freya, uh, decreasing her mana cost at all levels from 60 at level 1 um, to 80 to 45 at level 1 to 65. Pretty significant here, right? You're having um, now she can use this ability at almost the same cost she used to be able to use it at level one on. So pretty significant there, gonna have that up more often. And then same thing with Pulse uh, from 60 to 80 to 45 to 65. And then again, as um, we look at those abilities, the Irradiate is activating a buff that makes her basic attacks do magical damage. And Pulse is the ability that lets her basic attacks go ranged. So that, that's really what Freya you know, uses quite often uh, is that ability to kind of hit these two, hit these two abilities, and then keep enemies at range while also slowing them. So it, this is going to be very, very oppressive, uh, especially in Joust. You almost can't avoid those auto attacks when she does that, and decreasing the mana cost, so she's going to be able to kind of sustain that um, early pressure is going to be very, very tough in Joust. She kind of suffers from the same thing as Olorun and Artemis, where if her ult is down, she's very vulnerable. But with these buffs and the ability to slow pretty consistently, uh, she might be might be one of the top magical ADCs again. But I do think magical ADCs are kind of going to come a lot more into the Joust meta regardless. So um, you might see Freya quite a bit more often. I hate playing against really good Freyas. They're just so hard to lock down, and um, Wingblade is probably a must against her, and especially now with this buff. Nox, increasing minion damage. Uh, looks like at late levels, so not necessarily an impact on her early game, but going to do more minion damage uh, at level 5 through level 2, and increasing minion damage scaling from 40% to 50%. So this will help out uh, with some clears and, and stuff like that. But really, she's just a, a single lockdown monster. Uh, and Joust, she can be really good at just probably one of the best at, at really locking down one character on the enemy team and being able to eliminate them consistently. So she'll be, she's still a good pick in Joust. And she's, I think, a lot safer on this map than she was on the other map specifically. So... She's a good pick, uh, definitely above average, and good Nox players. If you can hit those CCs consistently, um, very hard to play against. Yamoja, um, getting a ton of changes. So it looks like that MP5 and mana aren't going to gain Omi anymore. She's going to gain those Omi consistently uh, when she levels. So now uh, it's more important to be leveling up those actual levels than it is to be building something like a, an early breastplate or or anything with mana or mp5 so that's going to shift the way that you build her but that being said mana and mp5 are now also converted to health so you're going to get more health from those items you're going to get a benefit from those items it's just not going to be the omi regeneration uh, benefit as it was before so you mojo players you'll have to really kind of manage that omi a lot more intelligently uh, because you're not going to be able to level it up um, as easily just by buying an item. Bouncing Bubble and Moonstrike, which Bouncing Bubble is the slow that comes up and it hits twice and kind of spreads. Moonstrike is the one where it converges into the middle and is able to stun uh, before you could span these abilities back to back. So you could hit Bouncing Bubble and then Moonstrike and then Bouncing Bubble just immediately, just one after the other. Now they're making it a change where if you try to spam that third ability, there's going to be a little bit of a delay. So you can't hit Bouncing Bubble, Moonstrike, Bouncing Bubble. It's going to be Bouncing Bubble, Moonstrike, and then there's a delay before you can actually hit that third ability. Um, so a little bit of a, a nerf, I would call it, um, just not allowing her to spam those abilities because they do a lot of damage early. That being said, though, Bouncing Bubble is getting more damage 
uh, it looks like at all levels. So 10 more damage at every single level, probably to make up for the fact that you can't spam a third one. But realistically, this, this nerf kind of negates this buff. Um, and then increasing that post fire from 0.3 to 0.43. So a little bit of a, a nerf on that as well. Increasing her cooldown from 110 to 120 seconds on the ultimate. Uh, that's 10 seconds, but really 110 was pretty short uh, for a really, really good ultimate in Joust. And this doesn't necessarily do much to her. I think 10 seconds, yeah, it's an inconvenience, so you're not going to have it up that often. But it's just such a good ultimate, especially in Joust. You can um, wall one person off. You can get the entire team in it if you want to. You can... Uh, for sieging, you can wall the entire team out while you attack the phoenix and force them to either jump into your ultimate or stay out and give up their phoenix. So Yamoja is a really, really good joust god right now. It does take a little bit to kind of have somebody that can play her well and use all her abilities, but she just has such utility across the board. She has healing, she has damage, she has a movement speed on her one, she has displacement, or sorry, movement speed on her three displacement to pull the enemy out of position on her three if you use it at max range um shield also so yeah there are just so many things that yamoji is, is good at that this this isn't gonna this isn't gonna put her down the list by any means I, I still think she is definitely a top pick if you have somebody that can play her well so that is it that is all the god changes happening in the 8.7 mid-season update that's going live on July 13th. If you learned something, if you enjoyed this, or just um, you know, even just have a question on content, I always love uh, hearing feedback. Uh, if you can take something away from this and use it in your games, um, that's kind of what I'm all about. So if you if you're able to do that, uh, like, subscribe, uh, follow me on Twitch where I'll go live there. Um, pretty much at least once or twice every weekend. I do have a full-time job, so it's not necessarily as consistent as most other full-time streamers, but I, I love to, to talk to people there and hear kind of what, what you're seeing, um, and I like to learn from everybody else as well. So I appreciate you guys that are watching this. I've appreciated all the um, subscriptions and follows and likes so far. Keep those coming, um, and I'll talk to you guys next time whenever the next update comes out or whenever uh, there's any sort of significant change in Smite relating to Joust. Thank you guys so much.